everyone. Welcome back to our summer learning lesson number two. This is third grade reading. My name is Mrs. Kenman, so let's get ready to go. First, we're gonna go back to that mindset. You've probably been playing. I hope that you're playing outside and doing lots of fun things with your family, but we really gotta get our mindset focused for learning during these summer lessons. So we're gonna be thinking about our learning GEMS, and GEMS is an acronym that I like to use. I like to think about what I'm grateful for, what I'm excited about, what I'm motivated to do, and a success that I can celebrate. So I'm gonna think through my learning GEMS while you're thinking through yours. Something that I am really grateful for is good friends, because I had friends that were all willing to let me borrow books to help me design my summer lessons. Since I'm a teacher, most of my books are at school, and I can't go in the physical school building right now, so I'm so grateful for my friends that I've been able to borrow from. I'm really excited because, again, today I have a dinosaur-themed story, and they've just been so fun to listen to. It's really exciting. Something that I am motivated to do this summer is to read every day. I love reading, but sometimes I just get so busy in life that I never take the time to sit down and read myself. And so I'm really motivated to read every day this summer. That kind of leans towards also my success this week. My family just had a quick little getaway um, a few days ago, and we were gone for five days, and I read five books. And that's a success that I'm celebrating today. It felt really good to get all that reading time in. In order to be ready to listen and ready to learn, we need to think about whole body listening skills. So we're back with Listening Larry, and as I read through each one, I want you to make sure that you're focused on that kind of listening yourself. So we're listening with our eyes. You're tracking the speaker and looking right at me, just like I'm looking right at you. Your ears are ready to listen. I'm minimizing that distraction in the background and really just listening to what I have to say. Your mouth is quiet. You're waiting for your turn to talk. Your hands and feet are quiet and still into yourself. Your body is facing the speaker. That's also part of tracking the speaker is making sure your body is facing the speaker. You're listening with your brain because you're thinking about what I'm saying and you're thinking about the skills that we're working on. You're not thinking about other things that are going on. And you're listening with your heart. You're considering what I'm saying. You're making connections, hopefully, with what I'm saying. And you're really open to learning something new today. So now that we're ready to listen, we're ready to learn, our mindset is focused, let's get started. We're gonna start with some word work today. And today our word work is about synonyms. Synonyms are words that have the same or nearly the same meaning. For example, happy and elated. Now look at how I use it in a sentence. Sherry was elated to see her family at her surprise party. I know that happy and elated are synonyms because I can replace the word, the word elated with the word happy and it still makes sense in the sentence. Let's try it. Sherry was happy to see her family at her surprise party. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Happy and elated are synonyms because they're words that mean the same or almost the same. Let's think about some other synonyms. How about the word rest? What is a synonym for the word rest? How about this word? We're gonna see if you and I are thinking about the same word. The word that I thought of that is a synonym for rest is relax. Rest and relax mean the same or almost the same. All right, how about the word shout? What is a synonym for shout? Let's see if we come up with the same one. For example, I had to shout so she could hear me. I could replace the word shout with yell. I had to yell so she could hear me. Those words mean the same or almost the same. So they are synonyms. Now we are gonna try some on your own. I'm going to give you a word and I want you to think about a word that is a synonym, a word that means the same 
or almost the same. And I want you to say it out loud. All right, are you ready? Let's try it. All right, exit. What's a synonym for the word exit? The one I came up with is leave. Now, you might have had another word that works as a synonym. Synonyms are not set pairs that always go together. There are lots of words that can be synonyms, usually several words that can be synonyms. Maybe you came up with something similar that wasn't exactly this, and that's okay. This is just another one for you to consider. You're thinking about synonyms, and that is what is important. Let's try another one. Present. Now, this is the type of present, like I gave her a present for her birthday. Can you think of a synonym for present? I came up with gift. Gift and present are synonyms. They mean almost the same thing. Let's try another one. Leap. What's a word that means the same or almost the same as leap? I came up with jump. Is that the same one that you came up with or did you have something different? Remember, synonyms are words that mean the same or almost the same. Really important as a reader that we're able to identify synonyms. They help us with vocabulary, they help us with fluency, they help us with comprehension. That's why they're so important. Now we're gonna go on to our fluency practice. Now, this is our second read of this paragraph. So you are going to be able to read it with more fluency. Fluency means being able to read uh, smoothly and accurately. Now, nobody's perfect. We never expect anything to be perfect, but we want our reading to be as accurate, which means correct, as accurate and as smooth as possible. Now, on this second fluency reading, I want you to pay particular attention to punctuation. If there's a period, you're gonna pause after that. If there's an exclamation mark, you're gonna make sure there's some excitement in your voice. And if there's a question, I don't think there's any questions in our paragraph, but remember what it sounds like at the end of a question as well. Okay, your voice kinda of goes up at the end. All right, a quick reminder about two challenging words. Carnivore, whoops. I touched it and I didn't even mean to. There we go. The word carnivore and also the word allosaurus, okay? So let's see if you can read this with great fluency. Make sure you're sitting where you can see your screen. I'm gonna read along with you. We're gonna go a little faster than last time because remember now it's a familiar read. This is our second time reading it. Ready? Let's read. We went on a field trip. On the trip, we saw huge dinosaur bones. One of the skeletons was standing up. It was taller than my teacher. We learned that this type of dinosaur ate meat. It was a carnivore. The Allosaurus had long teeth. These big teeth helped it eat meat. It was a fantastic field trip. So how did you do? Were you able to read that fluently? Your goal as a reader is to be able to build fluency and comprehension so that you're reading smoothly and accurately and you're also understanding what you read. So now that we've done some word work and we've done some fluency practice, now let's take a look at some comprehension. Now, last time we talked about these, do you remember? We talked about character traits. Remember, we don't always just want to describe the outside of a character, but also think about their thoughts and their words, their feelings, their personality traits, how we would describe them based on how they are on the inside. And then remember, we had all these examples of character traits. This is just to refresh your memory about what we did last time. Today, we're gonna to be taking our comprehension skills one step further. I'm gonna show you how in just a minute. Today's story is called Three Little Dinosaurs, okay? And remember, we always have a focus for listening. And his, here's what you're gonna be thinking about. 
I want you to think about, again, just like last time, who are the main characters and how would we describe them? And remember, we're gonna take our skill one step further. How do the characters' actions contribute to the plot? Now, do you remember that word plot? Remember, plot means the events in the story. That's all it is. When we think about plot, we think about beginning, middle, and end. So how do the characters' actions contribute or affect what's going on in the beginning, the middle, and end of the story? When we as readers think about this, it helps us to understand the story and that helps us to be the best reader that we can be. As you're reading, you want to pay attention to your reading voices. Let's talk about those really quickly. Your reading voice is the voice that you hear when you're reading. Whether you're listening to someone else read or whether you're reading to yourself, that is your reading voice. Your thinking voice is all those thoughts that are going on in your head as you are reading or listening to a story. These two things need to happen at the same time. In fact, it's a little bit of a trick. Some people think that the best readers only use their reading voice all the time. But I'm here to tell you that the very best readers use both of these voices at the same time. Because if you just read and you read and you read and you never think about what you're reading, you're not gonna be able to comprehend it very well. I know that from firsthand experience. When we read, we have to make connections and we have to think about what we're reading. That is how you're going to be the best reader that you can be. We wanna eliminate that distracting voice. Your distracting voice might be a thought in your head about something totally unrelated. Your distracting voice might also be noise that's going on around you. Whether it's in your head or whether it's out in your environment somewhere, you wanna minimize that distracting voice so you can really pay attention to your reading voice and your thinking voice. As you're listening to our story, your thinking voice is gonna be focused on the characters, their character traits, and how those actions contribute to the plot. Okay, are you ready to listen? You're gonna love this story. Boys and girls, it's your pal Vernon here, and the next story I'll be reading to you is a cute little story about three friends called the Three Little Dinosaurs. Here we go. Scratch, Lofty, and Sniff were the best of friends. There they are. They spent their days playing hide and seek in the forest or splashing in the lake. Sometimes they did cave paintings. Ooh, that's a pretty good one. But most of all, they like to pretend to fly. Ooh, me too. One day, Mrs. Brachiosaurus was picking pine cones for her famous pine cone pie. When Lofty asked, Mom, can dinosaurs fly? Mrs. Brachiosaurus thought for a moment. My friend Pterodactyl can. How? asked Lofty, excitedly. Well, he finds somewhere high up. Then he spreads his wings and takes off, said Mrs. B. I know a really high place, thought Lofty, and she rushed off to tell her friends. It was the volcano! In no time, they were scrambling up the rocky slope. Well, what if it goes bang, worried Sniff. Well, said Scratch, we'll just fly away. Come on! At the top, the three little dinosaurs began to flap with all their might. All together now. One, two, three, fly! You think they're gonna do it? Oh, they couldn't fly. Ouch! Instead, they tumbled head over heels and landed in a crumpled heap. Ouch! Dinosaurs can fly, moaned Sniff. <laughs> oh, yes, they can, came a loud voice. <gasps> Who said that? gasped Sniff. Not me, said Lofty. Not me, said Scratch. I'm up here, the voice chuckled. 
the three little dinosaurs couldn't believe their eyes. Above them, an enormous winged creature circled in the sky. Who are you? asked Sniff. I'm Pterodactyl, the creature replied. Do you need a lift home? The friends grinned at each other. Yes, please! So, one at a time, Terry picked them up and placed them carefully on his back. And they were off! Up and up! Through the clouds, high above the volcano! We're flying! They cried. We really are flying! Wow! There's Mom! yelled Lofty. Mrs. B stretched up her long neck and one by one, Terry passed the little dinosaurs down to her. They slid down her neck, whee! Over the hump of her back, whoosh! And zip! Right off the end of her tail. <laughs> Mrs. B thanked Terry for his kindness and gave him a large slice of pine cone pie. Yummy! That evening, three little dinosaurs munched on pinecone pie and watched Terry and his friends swoop and glide over the volcano. Then they went off to bed to dream of flying! <laughs> the end. See you next time. Thanks for watching Storytime Pals. Don't forget to like. All right, so did you like the story? Were you thinking about those main characters and how you would describe them and how their actions contribute to the plot? Let's talk about that a little bit more. So first, we're gonna describe the main characters. First of all, how would you describe the three friends, the three young dinosaurs? What are some words that you would use to describe them? Think about what they said. Think about what they did. How would you describe them? Well, here's what I came up with. For Scratch, Lofty, and Sniff, they're friends. They're very curious because what are they curious about? They're curious about flying, that's right. They're brave because they attempted it, right? That had to be a little bit scary. So if someone does something that's scary, I think that they're brave. They're also very excited. I'm thinking about as we went to the middle and end of the story, all three friends were very excited about what was going on. Now, how would you describe Terry Dactyl, Mrs. B's friend? How would you describe him? He's pretty different from Scratch, Lofty, and Sniff. Here's how I would describe Terry Dactyl. First of all, he can fly. That's important to the story, right? He's helpful. He's protective. And he's a good friend. I said he was helpful because he saw whenever the friends had crashed at the bottom of the volcano and he could have just ignored them, right? But he didn't. He wanted to help them. I think he also was a little bit protective of them. He knew that they were young. He knew that they needed to go home and he was the one to make sure that they got home safely. He's also a very good friend to the family because he made sure that they were home safe. Now, we're gonna take this one step beyond just describing those character traits and we're gonna think about how their actions contribute to the plot. How do their actions contribute to what has happened in the story? Well, think about the friends, the three friends their actions contributed to the story, how? What would have happened if they never decided to try to fly on their own? Well, the story would have been totally different, right? So their actions contributed to the plot. They really wanted to fly, so they attempted to fly off the volcano. Their curiosity caused them to tumble down the volcano. So remember, one of the character traits we talked about for those three was that they were curious. That curiosity is what caused them to try to fly and why they ultimately ended up tumbling down that volcano, right? So their actions 
are related to the character traits and their actions affect the plot, what is happening in the story. Now let's think of through that same thought process, but with Terry Dactyl. How did his actions contribute to the plot? Think about what happened particularly with his actions at the, in the middle and at the end of the story. His actions were very important. Think about how he was helpful and how he was protective and how he was a good friend to the family. Did you come up with the same actions I did? Terry noticed that the three friends attempt to fly and end up in a heap at the bottom of the volcano. His kindness and his protective nature caused him to help the young dinosaurs fly on his back and he made sure that they arrived home safely. And I don't know if you can remember back to the illustrations, but you can tell that he was looking at them with a kind smile. He was truly happy to help them in their dream of flying while he also made sure that they got home safely. So now let's think. Did we think about the character traits and how their actions contribute to the plot? Do we really understand the story very well? We sure do. That's why that thinking voice and thinking while you're reading helps you understand the story so much better. I want you to think of whatever stories you're reading at home. I hope you're reading books. Maybe before you go to bed at night, you like to read books. I want you to take these skills that we practiced today, describing the character, and thinking about how those actions contribute to the plot. I want you to connect that with your own books that you're reading at home and see if you can do that same thing with the characters that you're reading in your stories at home. Now let's check for understanding. If you remember last time, you're gonna get your fist ready and you're gonna do what's called a finger response. So I'm gonna read the question. If you choose answer choice A, you're gonna put one finger in the air. If you choose answer choice B, you're gonna put two fingers in the air. And if you choose answer choice C, you're gonna put three fingers in the air, okay? So your fist is ready. I'm gonna read the question, ready? At the beginning of the story, why do the three friends decide to go to the volcano? A, they want to try to fly. B, they want to collect rocks. Or C, someone dared them to. Ready? One, two, three, respond. You should have one finger in the air because the answer choice is A, they want to try to fly. Let's do another one. Why does Terry Dactyl fly, scratch, lofty, and sniff home on his back? A, he doesn't know how to walk. B, he wants to let them feel what it's like to fly. Or C, they asked him to. Ready? One, two, three, respond. You should have two fingers in the air. The answer is B, he wants to, them, he wants to let them feel what it's like to fly. Last question, ready? How do Mrs. B and the three friends show appreciation to Terry Dactyl for getting them home safely? A, money, B, water, C, pine cone pie. One, two, three, respond. C, they were very appreciative. That was a character trait of Mrs. B. She was very thankful, she was appreciative and she rewarded him or said thank you to him by giving him some pine cone pie. All right, now you're gonna be practicing this skill at home. Last time we talked about character traits, you read some sentences and you used your thinking voice to decide what character trait would fit in that sentence. Now you're gonna kinda of take it one step further and you're gonna write about it. You're gonna be making a connection to a friend of yours. You're gonna take what you've learned about character traits and how you describe people and you're gonna apply it to someone in your real life, your friend. Identify three character traits about your best friend and explain how your friend demonstrates that trait. And then you can finish by drawing a picture. There's an example here. My best friend is so respectful. So the character trait is respectful. She is polite to everyone and never takes things that do not belong to her. She always listens when the teacher is talking. So there's a character trait and then there's some actions 
that describe how that person is that character trait. And it's always fun to draw a picture of your best friend, right? So this is gonna be your at-home practice after today's lesson. All right, thanks for working hard with me today. I will see you in the next lesson. Today's code word is friendship. I hope you have a great day. See you later. Bye.